Bum, 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 Badum ba ba dum dum, ba dum da 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 dum ba da dum 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 Hello, my friends. Hello, my mighties. Hello, my Facebook Live friends. I need to get my Facebook Live feed up so that I can see what you are saying. Uh, let's just see if we can get this going here. Boost a post, maybe. Here we go. There we are. There we are. Hello from Mississippi. Happy spring. Hi from Colorado. Can you all hear me? You can see me, I know, but can you hear me? That's uh, yeah, Facebook. Yeah, let's just see if um, my Facebook friends are. There yeah, we go. Uh, there we are. My Facebook friends are all here. Hello from Gold Coast. <laughs> Howdy from Texas. Good evening, my friends. So great to see you. For those of you who are new here, my name is Joette Calabrese, and every Monday at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, we do one thing and one thing only, and that is we study homeopathy. I teach you what I know. I hope it augments what you know. I hope that you also share and you pass on the good word of homeopathy. For those of you who already know me, <laughs> hello, my friends. It's wonderful to see you all. All righty. Also, welcome all the new mighties. We've got lots and lots of new mighty members. Many of you have come through because you have purchased my new edition of the Gateway to Homeopathy, Practical Homeopathy 1. Brand new, just come out. It has just come out. And now what's coming with this is your um, some a trial period or some uh, some involvement in our membership of gateway or excuse me of uh, mighty members so welcome all my new members it's wonderful to see you yeah welcome to the great journey new mighty says heather <laughs> yeah every, the old people are 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 welcoming the new thank you for doing that <laughs> it's great to see so tonight we're going to talk about something that i'm going to tell you i'm going to be honest with you up front i mean you already know this for those of you who've been following i am not a medical doctor I'm a lay homeopath, which means that I've been using homeopathy for my family and myself for many years, but then went into after studying and going to school, homeopathy school, for many years, I then decided to open a practice and I've had an extremely busy practice. Um, at one point, up until more, until recently, I was overseeing about 50 cases per day. Now, it wasn't taking 50 cases per day. What I was doing was I had many cases who had been coming to me through the, through the years and, and uh, months and weeks and days, and, um, and they would email through my, my office those whose cases I was actively working on, and I would be responding to 50 cases per day. 50 emails is really what it boils down to. Oh, well, between emails and some uh, Zoom on active cases and then also with students. So it gave me, it gives me a unique perspective. It gives me a perspective that uh, those who have not, are not seeing as many cases as I have seen, um, a, the ability to, um, hear what people are doing, working with their naturopath, who, who are working, who are working with their naturopath for their medical doctor, their chiropractor, the nutritionist, etc. And so I get a great perspective. I get to look at their blood labs. 
Um, I get to um, see how they respond to homeopathic medicines. And then not only my unique perspective or my perspective in meeting with people one-on-one -on -one that's unique to each person, but rather also, or in addition to that, I, of course, for those of you who know me, I worked with doctors Pratip and Prasata Banerjee. And um, I worked with them over, not, not consecutively, but eight years. I went back and forth and back and forth to Calcutta and worked at the Prasanta Banerjee Homeopathic Research Foundation. And each time I sat side by side with the two great doctors um, or their senior doctors for a couple of uh, uh, months at a time, each time that I did that. So I was able to record, observe and record uh, about 8,000 cases. And so a, a myriad of, of, of conditions. Um, that really was a good representation of human suffering. And so each time I would come back to back home in the U.S., I would get all those cases and um, collate them, organize them according to the conditions so that I could make sense of them and, uh, and then teach. So I saw a great deal. And now that I'm in my 70s, um, I have seen a lot and I see vitamin, um, concerns come and vitamin concerns go, <coughs> excuse me. When I first started on this journey of learning at least holistic medicine, the big concern was, uh, vitamin C. And so everyone believed that we should be taking as much vitamin C as we possibly could tolerate. So you'd start out with, say, I don't know, 50 milligrams a day. And if there was bowel tolerance, meaning there wasn't uh, diarrhea or uh, cramping or gas, then you could go to 100 milligrams a day. And if there still was bowel tolerance, then 200, 500, 1,000, 10,000, 20,000 milligrams per day. Oh, yes, many people were doing that. And... Um, it's a very, it's a fascinating way of looking at this. Now, as I said, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm also not a biochemist. I'm not a pharmacist. Um, but after I saw the vitamin C interest, and there's, vitamin C is very important. There's no doubt about it. Um, then it was calcium, the importance of calcium. We should all have calcium. In fact, every woman that I was talking to who was going, uh, who was perimenopause or uh, post men, you know, later in life in their 60s, 50s, and 60s, uh, were told to take calcium every day. And it was supplemented in <clears throat> milk and in dairy products. And then they were told to take calcium um, ad nauseum, as far as I'm concerned. You'd find calcium in orange juice, for goodness sakes. Then it was vitamin E. <clears throat> and I'm not sure I'm even getting these all correct in the lineup of how. They started to show up in our um, um, in, in the news, but it was as though uh, there were fads. Now I am not going to tell you that vitamin deficiencies are fads. I'm going to tell you that a focus on a particular uh, vitamin seems awfully. How shall I say? <clears throat> myopic. And so what I mean by that is if we focus on just vitamin C or we focus on calcium or vitamin E um, or vitamin D, we're going to miss the point. I believe that it's important that we <clears throat> eat a very wholesome diet. Now, many times I've heard people say, oh, I eat really well. Well, that is meaningless to me. If I'm going to talk to them about nutrition, and again, I'm also not a nutritionist, but I was on the board of the Weston Price Foundation um, for several years, many years, <clears throat> I think about 10 or so years on the honorary board. And I was, um, and I taught a, a good deal of the information as I learned it regarding Dr. Weston Price's nutritional work. If you don't know about Dr. Weston Price, I urge you to look into it. Um, and I won't go into uh, what, what he stood for, the research, the voluminous research he did, but after looking at 
veganism, which I actually practiced for quite some time, but plain old garden variety vegetarianism. Um, I also practiced macrobiotics for, and these were for long stretches of time. I was looking for answers. When I finally fell on, I, I came across Dr. Weston Price's works because my son, one of my, my, my oldest son had trouble with um, a couple of teeth. And I realized at that point that it was the diet that I had been feeding him. And so I knew I had also read about Dr. Weston Price uh, before my son was born. And when I got to the time when my son was a little guy, he was pretty young, maybe three or four, um, I took up, as I said, veganism. And so, um, and I had put aside Dr. Weston Price's works that I had read years prior. When I realized what I had done in my child's uh, dental health, I realized that it was something that I had done because I don't have dental problems. Um, I don't have cavities, etc. I mean, if I had cavities, certainly I've had a few, but I don't have uh, dental issues, nor does my husband. And so I knew that it couldn't have been inherited. The food was depleted. So on the way home from a dental appointment with my son at the time, um, it hit me. It was a long drive home because I drove quite a distance to find a holistic dentist, holistic pediatrician, uh, holistic pediatric uh, dentist. <clears throat> and I had to go to Canada to do so. Uh, so on the way home with my little guy in the back seat, it it hit me that he needed to be having he needed to be eating foods that were different than what I had been giving him. And so on, I drove, instead of going directly home from that drive, I drove directly to a uh, friend's house who was raising goats and had goat milk. And I went directly to her home and started to buy goat milk, raw goat milk. And I started to uh, make my own cheese and my own yogurt and started to add butter. It was in one fell swoop. I went from vegan to bam, right into Weston Price. And so by doing that, um, what did I just do? I just closed down my Facebook feed. Did I close down my Facebook feed? Perry, maybe you can tell me. I want to make sure that I have not. Um, anyway, so Perry, if you can tell me, that would be great. So, um, did I cl close down Facebook? I think I closed down my Facebook feed by accident. It's still there. Just is it as I'm still as broadcasting? Just, yes. Okay. Okay. All right. So long as as long as I'm broadcasting, that's good. Oh. All righty. So it once I started reverting back to Dr. Weston Price's ways and started rereading what I had read years earlier, it was clear to me that the dental issue that my son was having was related to um, the food that I was not giving him and possibly the food that I was giving him. So I started with, um, as I said, raw milk. So let's start with that. As I, again, I'm going to warn you, I am not a nutritionist. I'm not a medical doctor. I've just, I have, I'm someone who has been searching for a very long time to find the answers. And I believe that I've found some pretty good ones. I don't think these are, this is the whole picture. There's always more to learn. There's always more to be brought to the table. So the first thing I want to start with for vitamin D deficiency um, <laughs> is nutrition. So where do we find vitamin D? Did I say C? I meant D. Vitamin D. Where do we go with vitamin D deficiency? Butter. I cannot emphasize enough the importance of butter. Butter, butter. And I don't mean just a little tab that put that you put, you know, you fry your egg in. No, 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 no. I'm talking about for each person, especially if they happen to be low in vitamin D or if they live up north and they're not getting sun, up to half a stick per day. Lard has vitamin D and it's very 
um, intensely uh, replete in vitamin D. Lard, liver. Oh, yes, my friends. Yes, liver. Beef in general. Sardines, salmon, swordfish. Cod liver oil, not fermented, but cod liver oil. Truly pastured eggs. Yes. These are the foods of our ancestors. This is not new um, ideas of what we should be eating. Look to the Spaniards. Look to the French. Look to the Italians. Uh, look to the Germans. That's the way they eat is the way we should be eating. And the Americans have gotten duped. Now, it does carry over into Europe as well. But the Americans have really gotten duped. We have really fallen hard for the silliness of the pretend foods. So let's start with that. But we're not going to talk too much about um, the um, about nutrition. Because I know that most of you already get all of this. <clears throat> One other thing I just want to say about butter. My husband and I go to this restaurant that has just the most wonderful ambiance. It's on the water. It's just exciting. We run into people we know. It's great fun. And recently they uh, started to give us bread and butter. And I don't eat the bread, but uh, the butter comes with it. And the butter was whipped. Whipped butter, in my estimation means that they're adding something, that they're whipping it up to add air, of course. But I think it's also a way to hide other oils that might be um, add, might be um, indeed added in order to put a, make it look like you're getting a lot more. <clears throat> and so I said, you know, may I have, um, you know, chunks of butter, not for the bread, but for um you know, I often ask for steamed vegetables and then I put butter on top of them. Um, oh, no, no. Well, well, this is what we have. It's whipped. I said, no, no, no. I want I want a, a, a chunk, hard butter. Oh, they said, this was so funny. <laughs> they said, oh, we make our own butter. I said, you mean you've got like a churn and you're back there churning butter? You're getting the cream from a local cow? I knew they weren't doing that. So the next time we went, I brought my own butter in a little container in my handbag. <laughs> and um, there was a big fuss because I did that. Oh, no, no, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. And so they put it, took it out, out of my little container and put it on a pretty dish and everything for me. But the point is we have to be very careful because things are called one thing and they're often not. So we want pastured uh, butter, of course. Okay, what's the next thing that I want to talk about with vitamin D? We'll get to homeopathy with this in a moment. But let's go with what's most logical here. Let's make it really, really simple, okay? If you live up north, you need to force yourself, if not by eating the foods I just mentioned, lard, uh, make your pies with, with, uh, with a crust made from lard instead of Crisco or whatever else some people are making their pie crust with. Um, tons of butter, cod liver oil, sardines, all of that. If you're not doing that, then you need to get in the sun. And I don't care if you live in Buffalo, New York, my hometown, because I do spend a good part of the winter there every year. You need to be, I'm being really facetious here, obviously, you need to be naked at noon. It was, I think that was the title of a book, and it was so aptly written. Without chemical sunscreen. How do I make this clear? Without sunscreen. No sunscreen. Without sunscreen. And at noon, yes. We need the sun. No, it's not our enemy. It's who it's it's what we need on a day to day basis. If it means that you have to be outside and it's freezing cold, at least open up your scarf, your jacket, get the sun on your face while you're opening up your mail and sit there for at least 30 minutes daily, <clears throat> absolutely daily, and then go in and make a pie with the crust made from lard or tallow and butter, etc. That's what we need to do on a regular basis. Now, I live in Florida, and I sit in the sun every day, pretty much. Now, it's been raining today, and yesterday it was kind of cloudy, and we had a lot to do yesterday, so I did not get out in the sun. But generally, my husband and I sit out in the sun and get, uh, we soak it up minimum 
half an hour a day. And in Florida, the sun is, we, we absorb it very quickly. And I don't worry about burning. My husband is extremely light skinned, blue eyed, blonde hair, and he does not wear sunscreen. He has never worn sunscreen. And I might add, he was a semi-professional sailor in the Bermuda race and many other semi-professional races, sailboat races. Never wore sunscreen. What did he do? If he thought he was getting too much sun, he simply put a hat on. So do not be afraid of the sun. Just don't damage your skin. Now, the way you damage your skin is if you get too much at once. It's just, I don't know, common sense. I grew up in a neighborhood, we were the only Italians in a neighborhood where everyone was pretty much Irish, some Germans. And um, my Irish friends who were light skinned simply wore a hat and they wore a gauzy dress. They, they sat in the, in the shade if, it was, if they had gotten to, they were thinking they were getting too much sun. So don't let anybody tell you that the sun is causing you damage unless you've allowed it to go too far and it has caused damage. And even then, the body has an ability to make the corrections, especially for eating the correct foods. All righty, let me take a sip of my water and then we'll go on to homeopathy. All righty. By the way, let's talk about the sun one more time. Burn too easily? Does one burn too easily? The remedy SOL, S-O-L, 30 or 200 can be used. If you know you're going to be out in the sun and you're one of those people who are extremely light skinned and it is the first time going out and now they're going to Florida or the Bahamas or something and they're afraid they're going to get burned, even though they're careful soul, S-O-L. Um, and it is an excellent medicine. I've used it many times. Um, I've taught about it and it so far has not uh, disappointed me. Sold 200, sold 30. It, um, it is sold um, by uh, OHM Pharma. And if you are a student or a client of mine, then you can purchase from OHM. They're not a retailer. Um, or I believe Helios in England carries it. So that's another possibility. So it can be used um, prophylactically. That, you know, you know you're going to the sun that day. Maybe the night before you take a dose. In the morning, one takes a dose and then... Um, not you. I'm not prescribing for you. I'm teaching you. <laughs> Remember, this is teaching. I'm not prescribing because I don't know who you are, right? I hope that everyone understands that. Uh, <laughs> and so um, it, can, it can be a very, very useful remedy. All right. There's a lot more use to it. There are many ways to understand how to use it, but I'm not going to go into it too deeply because I really want to talk about vitamin D. Now, here's the thing that I always ask. People come to me and they say, I have a vitamin D deficiency. And I say, so how do you know that? Well, from the tests. So what brought you to take a test? I mean, personally, I don't go about taking tests. I get a test if something's wrong. I think that by taking tests regularly, that we are exposing ourselves to a kind of thinking that uh, leads us to believe that we are um, not capable of handling um, our lives ourselves, that we must find out what our blood labs are saying and have someone interpret it to, for us. And then from there, we must be treated. Because I guarantee that if someone goes for tests, there'll be something to treat. And a lot of times, um, Conditions that um, that are found represented by blood labs and other kinds of labs are fleeting. But if we're constantly going for tests or even regularly going for tests, we'll be treating something always. You need this. You need this test. You need to go for colonoscopy because of your age, a mammogram because you're a woman, um, you need uh, uh, you need to take the synthetic vitamin D. You, we could keep going with all of this. I prefer 
to just live my life. And if something is wrong, I use homeopathy, adjust my lifestyle a little bit, adjust my food, perhaps, perhaps I'm not drinking enough water. And I know that's very much so for me. Um, I can pretty much figure out what it is that's going on, or I can adjust it, even if I don't know exactly what it is. So if someone comes with a vitamin D deficiency from a lab, my question is, what brought you to go to get the lab test in the first place? And if it was just because the doctor says it was time, then, well, I'm sorry. that I, I, I don't hold that in very, I, I try to encourage folks to reconsider that constant patient thinking. Um, but more often than not, they, there, there might be a little something wrong. What would be wrong? Fatigue? Um, maybe some achiness, some bone pain. Uh, maybe they're getting sick too frequently. Uh, maybe there's weakness. Um, and then uh, they, feel, they feel perhaps inflamed, maybe in the joints or the bones. So the first thing that I think of is, is there anything going on nutritionally or, gut, excuse me, gut-wise with the GI? Is there bloating? Is there eructations, um, gas, um, um, discomfort after eating certain foods, unable to eat certain foods, can't have dairy, can't have gluten, can't have this, can't do that. All when, when we see, that's what we're looking for, is is it an uptake concern? I believe in the fact that it is an uptake concern. Um, if it's not from vitamin D deficiency, or these conditions can mean that the that the body is not taking in the nutrients it ought to be, including the sun, because we need that sun. So that again is number one, along with the foods, the shift in, in the diet. So there are conditions, these are conditions that I'm describing where the nutrients are not properly absorbed. That could be Crohn's, it could be celiac, it could be arthritis, it could be just chronic fatigue, it could simply inflammation, sleep disturbances, getting sick too frequently, getting colds, and et cetera, et cetera, all of that. So what we do is look at what are the symptoms? What's the name of the condition? We're not saying that this is a vitamin D deficiency condition. That's looking at it kind of, mm, that's the effect, not the cause. And so we're not always looking at the cause. Please don't get me wrong, because we could go down a rabbit hole forever, or many rabbit holes. But what we're looking at is the fact that um, there are these symptoms. So let's gather up the symptoms this person is suffering from, and let's come up with a homeopathic medicine that approaches that meets the symptoms with a homeopathic medicine. And one of the great medicines for that, there are many medicines that we could consider here, my friends, but one of the great medicines for that is a simple little cell salt called Kelk Fas, Calcarea Phosphoricum, Kelk Fas. Another is Kelk Flor, Calcarea flora, Floriticum. Now I like Kelk Fos 3 and I like Kelk Floor 12. And I'm not telling somebody that if they have a vitamin D deficiency or it shows that there's a deficiency in their lab results, that they need to go right out and take Kelk Fos and Kelk Floor. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that you open up, you look at the conditions that the person is suffering, see if it matches Kelk Fos in the Materia Medica, see if it matches the Kelk Floor in the Materia Medica. And if they match, now you've got a potential solution. And you may find that the energy starts to improve. The sleep is more restful. The, the, the uh, uh, fatigue is, uh, uh, the energy is restored. The uh, bone pain is, is washes away. The weakness is, is, uh, is, re is replaced by strength. The colds and flus are not as frequent, etc. 
Kelkfoss 3 is my first choice and Kelk Floor 12. Those are my two first choices. But if someone is not a member of my, not a, a, a student of mine or a client of mine, and they can't get those particular potencies from OHM, again, they could go to, they could go to Boron, they go to Washington Homeopathics or Hahnemann Pharmacy or Helios. Um, and you can get those in those potencies, Kelk Phos 3, Kelk Floor 12. And how do we use them? We use them generally twice daily. And so when someone asks, which one helps with fatigue and sleep? This is my answer. Open up your Materia Medica. And if you don't have one, you should own one. You should own my Materia Medica. If you don't have that, then you should at least have be able to go online and, and look for Materia Medica homeopathy and start reading from that. You can get it for free. But there are other Materia Medicas that I urge you very strongly to consider owning. I won't go through them right now because we're running out of time. But often kelk foss and kelk floor will plus getting in the sunshine naked at noon lots of butter that's the easiest one my friends butter 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 not everyone knows where to get lard and how to use lard and tallow not everyone wants to eat sardines not everyone wants to eat liver but i got to tell you i eat liver approximately once a week or so liver is so important Pasture raised, yes, my friends. Um, not everyone will eat swordfish, etc. Um, so the, butter is the easiest way to get these foods. Pasture raised eggs, very easy. You can turn a vitamin D deficiency around in very short order by having eggs fried in butter every day, every morning, and then a couple hours later at noon sitting out in the sun. You bet that alone can take care of most, not all, most vitamin D deficiencies in my experience as a practitioner for these 36 years. And so with that, my friends, <laughs> I so look forward to seeing you next time. And lots of butter, says Leah. You bet. Butter, 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 butter. Eggs. Yes, I know eggs are expensive. You got to do what it takes or get your get chickens. I understand they're expensive. You just got to do what it takes. So God bless you all. Mwah. See you next week. I hope this helps you. Bye now. <laughs>